what makes a genius, they all have one trait in common, they were able to spend extended periods of time in isolation focused monomaniacally on their most valuable project. Please turn off your electronic gadgets. <laughs> Not for others, but for yourself. We have put this governor on our minds. And you have to, the factory that put the governor on that car, the factory is now you. Wanna be happy? Build a life, not just a business. Mm -hmm. Living that believe in life. Out here yeah, living that believe in life. Every day we living that believe in life. What's the luck we living that believe in life? Living life, yeah, so we grinding it out. Every single day we be grinding it out. What's the luck we living that believe in life for? Oh. It's Evan Carmichael and this channel was created to help you overcome the number one challenge that is holding you back, a lack of belief in yourself. You watch these videos because you know there's something more inside you too. You've got Michael Jordan level talent at something. So today let's live your best belief life and learn some of the habits that will change your life. Enjoy. Okay, let's kick it off with habit number one. Use the 90-91 rule with Robin Sharma. For the next 90 days, your first 90 minutes at work, make it focused on your single most important project. I'll repeat that again. For the next 90 days, the first 90 minutes of your workday, focus monomaniacally on your single most valuable project. I call it your game-changing move. So it might be, it might be creating a new piece of code that will revolutionize the marketplace. It might be a new product that when you launch it will fill a need within your industry that no peer is currently providing. I don't know what your game-changing move is, but this is your poetry. This is your magnum opus for the next 90 days. So what most people do is, you know, people who are playing at victimhood, people who are in the 95%, people who are making excuses about ordinary results in their life, a lot of them are not doing the things that would give them legendary results. And what they do is they get to the office and rather than using prime time for A activities, they use their best hours watching dancing cats on whatever it is, whatever the video platform is. They spend their best hours surfing the internet looking at blogs. They spend their best hours playing with notifications, reading notifications, chatting with friends who are not really their friends, but really they're just bored so they're distracting themselves, which is just a form of medication because potential unexpressed turns to pain and they're in a lot of pain and it's subconscious and they haven't done the work to know it. So really they've created these drugs of choice like too much email, too much web surfing, too much chit chatting, too much looking at funny looking videos that make them laugh in the moment, that make them feel happy and give them a short burst of dopamine and maybe a little bit of serotonin, which is the pleasure neuro uh, neurotransmitter, and that's how they get through their day. And all I'm saying is there is so much distraction available to you out there that if you are not acutely careful, it will dominate your days. What I'm really trying to say is this, a ritual for you to run and dial in and hardwire to the point of automaticity, that's the word the researchers use when a habit becomes your new normal over 66 days, is the 1991 rule. And to give it to you again so you really remember it, for the next 90 days, your first 90 minutes, create a tight bubble of total focus so that no one can distract you. Turn off your devices, put them in a little plastic bag, put some reminders on your door, maybe some post-it notes that this is my tight bubble of total focus for the next 90 minutes. Tell your team, tell your loved ones, maybe get a, put a do not disturb so sign on your door. They'll laugh and explain it to them that for the next 90 days, I will spend 90 minutes away from distraction, away from technology, away from interruptions, focusing on my magnum opus, focusing on the genius project that I want to bring into the world because I will never mail it in, I will always bring it on, and I'm going to do this for the next 90 minutes, and I'm going to optimize it and iterate it every day, and I'm going to bring my full bandwidth because what makes a genius, they all have one trait in common, they were able to spend extended periods of time in isolation focused monomaniacally on their most valuable project. 
Habit number two, grow gradually with Dan Locke. You will not get to this kind of super productivity overnight. It's not a shortcut, but it's like a muscle. You know, at first you lift five pounds, and then six pounds, and 10 pounds. And as you gradually grow, you will be shocked how much you accomplish compared to most people. Because most people don't accomplish a lot. And I like to be smart with my time. So I'm answering questions, I'm creating content, I'm speaking, I'm creating content, I'm repurposing, um, then I'm going to go walk the floor, uh, meet with some people, bring in some business accounts, relationships, right? And then evening, desperate. So a lot of that, of course, if it's not got a team, so everything multiplies. But for personal productivity, what you, you guys all strive for is the maximum that personal productivity first. Don't try to be me, you will go nuts. You, you will 100% go nuts. Be the best version of you. So if you're closing, am I performing the best? Am I optim operating at an optimal level? Am I focused? Just do that first. And then from there, you know, if I'm closing in 60 minutes, can I close at 55 minutes? Can I close at 45 minutes? Not rushing, but just to see how it goes. Be a little bit more efficient with my time. So you go from there, right? Instead of trying to, oh, see what you do this. I have not met anybody can do what I do, so forget it. Forget it. So don't, don't try to do that. It, it will only create so much stress. When they see I do this and do this and do this, no, it's, a, it's not a good idea. That's why it's better sometimes listen to the instruction that Sifu gives you, but don't try to copy what I do because you're not, it's a different thing. You're not at that place, right? So I say, wear the costume. I don't need to wear a costume. I got it. But you wear the costume because that's where you're at, right? But you also, if he doesn't wear a costume, he doesn't need it. See, he's been this for a long time. Like, I can deliver a talk like that with no script, with nothing. No preparation, by the way. There's zero preparation. So when I do STC, like Facebook video, I split it like five, ten times. That's what I mean. So, but I could do things where, because I've done it for so long, so it's different. So don't try to attempt. Make sense? Yeah. yeah. So no gimmick, to, but be the best version of you. Just be a little bit more efficient, a little bit every week, make some tweaks, some improvement, right? You close the first out, good. Get to the next one. That's why I challenge you guys. Close the first out, get to the next one. Get to the next one. Don't sit on it too long. Mm. Like, oh yeah! <laughs> five minutes. Okay, give me five minutes. Move on, next thing. Because I need you to get to that first 10, 20, 100 cell. Because by the time you get to that 30, 40, 50, that's who you are. Now you're not trying to do closing, right? You know, I'm a closing. I'm closing every minute. I don't need to, but I like to close. I'm closing, I'm closing a book. I'm selling a book, 20 bucks. Hi, this is Dan Locke. I want to share with you a lesson from Evan Carl Michael's new book, Built to Serve. This section is about making money from your purpose. You have to embrace that. If you never learn how to make money from your purpose, you'll always end up needing a day job, and your purpose will become a hobby. If that sounds like a great life to you, then I'm happy for you. If not, then you need to figure out a money-making model that makes sense, one that is consistent, one that is significant, one that can pay you so you can quit your job and succeed to the point where you are providing jobs for others and helping even more people. You see, money is nothing more than a byproduct of value creation. The more people that you serve, the more successful that you will be. So to have long-term success is not just built to last or, or built to sell or even built to scale. It is built to serve. And this book will teach you exactly how to do that. Habit number three, take your time to think with Jim Collins. Please turn off your electronic gadget. <laughs> Not for others, but for yourself. Effective people take time to think. Begin the discipline of putting white space on your calendar where there's no phone, no, no email. I was going to say no fax, but they don't even have that anymore. Uh, no Twitter, no emails, no connections. And engage in this glorious pockets of quietude to think. Do you know that Rick Warden reads a book every single day? A book a day. A book a day, 365 days a year. 
You read a thousand books in three years. Habit number four, manage your activities with Bob Proctor. Think of this for a moment. Do you know that every living soul gets exactly the same amount of time? Exactly the same amount of time. Figure it out. You get all there is. A hobo sleeping under a bridge or on a park bench that has no material possessions, none, does nothing of any constructive nature. That person gets exactly the same amount of time as the most productive industrialist in the world. We all get exactly the same amount of time. So it's what we do with the time that makes a difference. Now, I want you to think of the number of time management programs. Almost everyone under the sun has time management programs. In fact, I made one one time, spent a lot of money on it. And then I found out it was a dumb waste of time and money. Do you know why? Time can't be managed. I was having breakfast with Earl Nightingale one morning, and it was downtown Chicago, and I was going with him on a speaking engagement, and it was early in the morning. He said, you want to meet for breakfast? Whenever Earl Nightingale said, you want to meet me, I was there, and I always had some well-prepared questions. And I remember asking him, I said, Earl, how did you learn how to master time management? You know, we're having breakfast. I can still hear his fork hit the plate. He said, what the hell are you talking about? He said, I've never mastered time management. Nobody masters time management. He said, time can't be managed. He said, I merely manage activity. And he took a little card out of his pocket. And he said, every night before I go to bed, I write down six most important things I have to do tomorrow. These are goal achieving activities. And when I wake up, that's what I start working on. And if I don't get them all done, I'll add them to tomorrow's list. He said, you should have about six. Now, if I have three that I didn't get done today, that doesn't mean I have nine for tomorrow, like six plus these three. Those three become part of the six you have to do the next day. When you wake up, you give all your conscious attention to do those things. See, you cannot manage time, but you can manage activity. You can manage your activities. Make certain that what you're doing really makes a difference. Make certain that you're spending your time on activities that are productive, that are taking you in the direction of your goal. Time cannot be managed, activities can. And habit number five, the last one before a very special bonus clip is use the 40% rule with David Goggins. When you, when your mind, this is this, this, this whole 40% rule I talk about all the mm -hmm. time, that I made up a long time ago, I started making it up through pain. Tell them what that is, would you go? So basically the 40% rule is I, I'm a strong believer that we quit. Because why? How the f does a 297 pound cockroach guy right. who quit on everything is now considered one of the baddest men on the planet? Mm -hmm. How is that possible? Mm -hmm. It means I had to change one thing, my mindset. Mm -hmm. So there's no way in hell that that was in, but that was. That guy was in me. Mm -hmm. When that guy came down here and said, hey, right. guess what, man? <laughs> You're a fat ass, <laughs> but I'm gonna now make you a badass. <laughs> I'm gonna miracle this Mm -hmm. to be a badass. No, mm -hmm. it was in me. Mm -hmm. I had to believe and make that belief work. Mm -hmm. And through hard work, I did that. Mm -hmm. So the 40% rule is like we have a, like a car. Some cars have a governor on it. Mm -hmm. And when you get to like 92 miles an hour, that car will start doing this because it mm -hmm. can't go any faster. Mm -hmm. Those cars that don't have governors on like a, like a fast ass, whatever, Porsche, whatever, mm -hmm. I'm gonna bury it, gone. Mm -hmm. We have that ability in us, but we have put this governor on our minds. And you have to, the factory that put the governor on that car, the factory is now you. Ooh. That put this shit on your mind. You gotta take that off. Ooh. Until you take it off, you're gonna constantly get to 92 miles an hour and do this. Yeah. Cause you ain't gonna go no faster. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you might even go slower. Mm. So basically, I started realizing this through my life, through going through all these times.
Now I've got a really special bonus clip that I think you're gonna enjoy, but before that, it's time for the question of the day. I wanna know, what was your single biggest takeaway from this video? And write down in the comments below when you're going to take action on that takeaway this week. When you schedule in what day, what time, and what place you're gonna take action, you have a 91% chance of actually following through, compared to just 35% if you just got motivated but never created a plan. And when you share your plan and have accountability, you give yourself an even higher chance of following through. So in the comments below, write down your single biggest takeaway as well as your specific plan of action, because I want to celebrate with you. Nobody wakes up every day and says, this is going to be the greatest day ever. Not Dan Locke, not Evan Carmichael, not Tony Robbins, nobody. You wake up and you're tired and you have stuff in your eyes and you have lines on your face from the pillows. The difference between successful people is that they demand excellence from themselves to the habits and routines that they do daily. The problem is that thinking that these people are different, that if you're not waking up with tons of motivation ready to take on the day, that something is wrong with you. The only thing that's wrong with you is you don't have the habits that set you up for success every single day and today, I wanna change that. So I have a 5S morning routine that I go through every single day that sets me up for success, that demands excellence I'm gonna share with you guys today. The first S is sing. The fastest way to change your state is to put on music. The fastest way to go from feeling low energy, tired, bored, into an energy of I am ready to go is music. Put on the song, not that makes you feel the current way that you're feeling. This is where most people mess up. You put on music for how you're currently feeling. If you're feeling really sad and low energy, you're gonna put on really mellow, slow music. What does that do? It keeps you in the same state that you're in. It, it keeps you exactly where you are. What you wanna do is put on the music for how you wanna feel. And so I have a playlist on my main channel called the Believe Playlist, which is the songs that I listen to. These are the songs that I listen to every day. They may work for you, they may not work for you. There's no perfect song for everybody. This is the perfect song for you. And so build a playlist of the songs that make you come alive. Here's the criteria. If this song came on, it would force you to start moving. If the song came on, you find yourself doing this. If the song came on, you would get out of your chair and want to move around. Doesn't mean you're gonna dance like crazy. Doesn't mean you're gonna start building out the lyrics. That may be you, awesome. But if you're a little more introverted or don't like to dance, something that would make you move, something that would get you at least in your chair doing this, that's what I want. Make a playlist and put that on. It's the first thing that you do every single morning. It'll make a huge difference to setting the tone, changing your state, and giving you energy and momentum to start the day. S number two is sun. I like getting outside. I think there's something about getting outside of your home, of your condo, your apartment, getting outside, getting some fresh air, just being out in nature makes a big difference. Getting some, getting some vitamins on your face from the sun outside, but also signifying that you're, you're leaving your bedroom. You're leaving the condo, the apartment, the home. You're leaving what happened last night and you're ready to go off and start the day. This is especially important if you're working from home because it's easy to, have your you know, office right next to your bedroom or maybe your office is your bedroom and carry that bedroom energy, that tired, I just woke up, I wanna stay in bed, I wanna sleep energy into your work and you won't do great things if that's the energy you're carrying to your work. So having some kind of ritual that splits up sleeping energy to I'm ready to go energy makes a big difference and I find the easiest way to do it is to get outside and get some sun. Bonus points if you're in a condo or apartment to take the stairs instead of the elevator. S number three is sore, and this is the most important thing for me. If you only take one of the five, I think this is the most important one to take. What is the thing that makes you sore every day? What's the thing that makes you feel alive, bold, confident? What is that? And put it into your morning routine. At some point in your life, you felt bold. You felt unstoppable, you felt confident. It's happened to everybody. The problem is you don't feel that way consistently every day. You go through these bursts, these moments of, man, I could do such amazing things, but then the next day you wake up and you're a different person. You're back to the, I don't know if I can do it. I don't know, who am I to go do this crazy thing? That's the problem. So whatever the thing is that makes you feel like you can come alive, that gives you that boldness and confidence, plan it with intention every single day into your morning routine. For me, what I do is I record a message on my phone to, to Instagram, to my stories, to I put it to LinkedIn and Twitter. Right now I'm putting it everywhere, but I need to make a message. So I, th I think of somebody that I helped yesterday. 
I think of somebody who commented on a video, who I met in person, who I coached on my Instagram Live, somebody that I helped yesterday. And then I make a message channeling that person. I won't say the person's name, but I, I have them in my head. That I need to remind myself that the work that I do is important. It's easy to get lost in the numbers. It's, it's hard to imagine that two to 300,000 people watched my videos yesterday. That's crazy. It's a wild number, right? It's wild. It's hard to, well, like, what does that even mean? I don't know. I'm just sitting here talking to a camera in my office and two to 300,000 people are watching my videos. It's crazy. I need to think down to the actual person. I need to think about an individual that this matters to somebody, that the work I do really means something to them. And then I need to record a message and share. That helps me soar and I do it every day. What is the thing for you? What makes you soar? Maybe it's watching the 254 series that I put up every day. Maybe it's watching the Inspresso videos like this that I put up every day. And some people, every day, this is part of the morning routine, is watching an Inspresso video and I'm humbled to be part of your morning routine. For other people, it might be meditating, it might be watching a video, it might be reading a book, listening to a podcast. I don't care what the thing is, but you have felt bold, unstoppable, and confident at some point in your life. What led you to feeling that way and then demand it of yourself every day by putting it into your morning routine? The third S is sore, it's the most important one. The fourth S for me is sweat. This is just about being healthy, having a healthy lifestyle, and I wanna do something that makes me sweat. So whether it's a HIIT workout, a cardio workout, a weights workout, I put that into my daily routine because I wanna bust a sweat and I wanna stay healthy into my 40s, which is coming up, and then into my 50s and beyond. And then the last S for me is scare. I wanna do something every day that scares me. What I'm doing right now is I take a cold shower. So after sweating, I need to have a shower. Don't wanna show up to work all smelly. And so I hop in the shower, but right away, start turning the colder and colder and colder and colder and colder. And then right at the very end, I go all the way cold and I freeze. And even just thinking about right now, it sucks, which is the best. Right, you wanna do the thing that scares you every day. You're teaching yourself that I do scary things. So whatever is scary for you, whether it's taking a cold shower, whether it's making a phone call, whether it's sending an email, making a video and posting it, doing scary things, teaching yourself, getting that out of the way right from the beginning, I find really helps me. If you wanna learn how to hack your life for success, check out the video right there next to me. Oh. I think you'll enjoy it. <laughs> Continue to believe and I'll see you there.